Well, good morning, everybody. At least it's morning for me here. <laughs> um, I'm doing this early in the morning because I know that today nobody in the house is getting up. But they shouldn't be getting up this early. So I'll be able to do, hopefully do this without too many interruptions, or without any interruptions would be great. Um, so if I sound a little groggy, it's because I haven't had a lot of coffee yet. <laughs> but we're, um, we're gonna go ahead and do this. And basically today we're just gonna pick up from where I left off um, the last time. And if you haven't seen the last two uh, videos, I started off doing a basic twist, then we moved on to a basic braid, right? Now we're going to take that braid and we're going to add in what are called breaks. So we're just going to use this basic braid and all we're going to do is add in two breaks to give it a different kind of a look. So we'll end up with a thread that has a second link inside of it in, in the shape of a figure eight. Okay. Um, so that'll give it an interesting kind of a look and you can end up with something like stylized like this, right? So that's the goal today is to add in that. Now the next video I'll do after um, will be to add in horizontal breaks. So today we're going to add in a couple vertical breaks. The next video after this will be horizontal breaks, which gives, gives it an even more different look. But I'm getting ahead of myself, so let's go ahead and get this started. Now we're going to get it started the same way we did the braid. It, we're just doing the braid basically. So that's where we're starting today. So we have a two by nine square grid. Um, I didn't draw the lines today because I kind of feel like there's too much to erase when I do the lines. So it, to indicate where the lines are, I just marked the intersections between the boxes so I know where they are. All right, and we're just gonna go through and go down the center and do our circles. We're going to do our circles in the center of each box. Keep them, they don't have to be perfect, but keep them around about closely the same, same size. And remember what I said before, the uh, smaller the circle, the bigger, the thicker the, the thread will be. The uh, bigger the circle, the thinner the thread will be. All right, we're going to go ahead and we're going to do the circles at the top and the bottom like we did before. You can put circles. I'll put circles on the corners. doesn't really matter. I don't worry too much about the ends, really, until I get to the end. But anyway, all right, so we're going to start with our perpendicular pairs of lines like we did with the braid. We're just doing the braid to start. So we're gonna go on the inside of each circle, right? We're finding four circles and we're drawing parallel lines touching the inside edges of each circle, okay? Then we are going to draw perpendicular sets of lines coming out from that starting point. That's gonna to start to give us the weave, right? Imagine this is gonna be a thread. Imagine this is gonna be a thread. So 
we're just doing perpendicular. Do not jump around when you, once you pick a point, work from that point and don't move, jump, don't jump around. You wanna keep it consistent. Whenever you see three circles, you leave it. And we're not doing the ends until the end. And this is just, um, when you do this, you're going to want to draw these lines in lightly because they're either going to be, some things are going to be erased and some things are going to be traced, like traced over. So you don't need to draw dark, heavy lines here. They're just, just keep it light. You're basically just doing guides. How's everybody doing this morning? It is so hot these last couple of days and humid. It's unbelievable. And it's September. Usually around here we get that kind of weather the end of July into August but it's September already and we're having 90 degree weather 90 plus degree weather okay so here we go we have the braid now we're going to add in the vertical breaks that we need and for these purposes I chose to do my breaks in box three and box, uh, I think this was nine, eight, seven, All right? So three and seven in those columns. And I did the breaks um, going from the circles that were in the middle of each of those boxes in those columns, connecting those circles with a line. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do that. One, two, three. This is row three. We're gonna have it. I'm drawing this in dark. You don't want to do that. But I'm just doing it so that you can see it. And then seven. All right, there's our breaks. And then we're going to go in with an eraser. This is just a click eraser. It's really easy. All right, now for this one, the reason why this break is here, it means that the line cannot go through that. It's like a wall. If a thread comes to that wall, it has to turn, okay? So anything that comes up to that wall has to turn and like almost at right angles and go off in a different direction. So you're just gonna do a little bit of erasing here. You, you don't wanna erase a whole lot, just Anything just kind of comes up to the line. Now there, you can definitely put these breaks in before you draw out your weave pattern, these perpendicular lines. I did that and um, <laughs> you have to think once you get to this line as you're drawing in these pairs. You get to this line and you have to start thinking Okay, if this thread's going here and this thread's going here and you have to think about your over and unders and that's fine if you're if you're with it that day, you know, or if you've got a lot of experience doing it that way. Um, I did it that way first just to kind of uh, play around and see how I was going to do this video and everything was fine until I got to the end and for some reason I dropped the ball at the end. <laughs> and that's when I realized, I said, you know what, this, this is going to be easier to show you um, if you just draw out the basic um, perpendicular line sets of lines for the braid, draw in your breaks, and then just erase the little bit that you got to erase. It's, it's really much, much easier and much less confusing that way. All right, so... Let's deal with, the, with these breaks while we're here. 
So imagine we have this line, which is going underneath this, and it's going to get here and it's going to turn, right? And it's going that way. If this break wasn't here, we would have and have it go underneath. But there's a break here. There's nowhere, it can't go where it would normally go. So it is going to turn. Okay, so that it goes underneath this one. So we have this line going under. Does it turn around? It hits the wall, it turns, and it's going to go, hmm, it's going to go, it can't go under, can it? Oh, no, all right. See, this is what I mean. Sometimes this stuff can drive you crazy. So <laughs> this line goes under this one and goes over this one, turns, and then it goes under this one. Okay, so yeah, I haven't had enough coffee this morning. But anyway, that's how this is gonna, and it's basically gonna form a, a bit of a link. So let's take that, the edge of that thread, and we're just gonna draw in that turn so that we have that sorted out. And then you go to the other side of the wall and you're gonna do the same thing. There is a thread that goes this way. It goes underneath here. It would normally go this way, but it can't. So it has to turn. So we're gonna do the edge of that. Okay, now we'll come over here and we're going to do the exact same thing for this break. This is the, the thread we're working on. Okay, and then over here, this is the thread we're working on. Okay, erase anything we don't need, including all those marks I just made. So hopefully we understand that. Okay. The rest of this is basically just doing the same thing we did with the braid. We'll start with creating the loops. That's going around the wall. We're gonna leave the ends. Now we're gonna do the bottom. And you're seeing it's starting to take shape, right? Where are we going here? So we have our top and bottoms, and you can already see, here's the figure eight link that we created that weaves under and over this, the rest of this that forms 
like you'll see a link on this but it's not a closed link like the figure eight it actually will wind around and let me finish the ends and you'll see it even better Oops, that was really horrible, wasn't it? It's me trying to rush. Okay. All right, now you'll see that this is not a closed link like the figure eight. It's actually part of the rest of the thread. So we start, we have under, over, under, over, under, over. Under it can drive you crazy after a bit, but okay, we're going. Uh, let's see, we got. See, we're going this way with the thread. So it's a really cool way of just creating a little bit of something different. Just taking a basic braid and doing something just a little different, okay? Um, and that's it. I mean, that, that's really just about it. You can get really complicated with this. You can add in um, horizontal. You can mix horizontal and vertical breaks together in the same kind of pattern. If you know what you're doing um, you can even do crosses uh, you can do like a cross um, an X and I think I've done that already in a previous video in, in a hearts a heart shield video I did um, where you did a cross and then nothing could come past this 90 degree angle right there's all kinds of things that you can do with breaks that, that really take these basic knots and, and really give them a sense of style. Um, I think today, now this one, I'm not gonna go ahead and stylize this because we've done this already. Um, she says as she grabs a pencil to go <laughs> do exactly that. I can't help myself, I, I just can't. I love doing this stuff. But basically you're just gonna retrace your lines and you know clean them up I'm not making a work of art here I'm just showing you kind of what what you can do with it not bad for somebody who had almost no coffee this morning I know I've had a, a comment, at least one comment so far, that this has been very helpful um, because it's hard to find basic tutorials for this kind of stuff that, that breaks it down this way. Um, you know, let me know if you find this helpful to you. Um, let me know if there's something else you'd like to see, if, if there's like a specific type of thing you'd like, like to see done, and maybe we'll see what we can, um, see if it's something I can do. Oops, that's a little off, but anyway. And then it's just basically from the, from this point on, you're doing, you know, you're shading your, uh, where your lines are so that you can get some kind of sense of, of three dimensions that the uh, lines are going over and under each other.
Wendy stomp. And these blending stumps, you're just you're you're basically grabbing the lead from the line and kind of pulling it out, softening it as you go further away from the line, you soften it, loosen up your your pressure. And you can make that as dark or as light as you would like. You can do hatching if you if that's your thing. If you'd rather do hatching for there's you can then take this and you can take all kinds of basic drawing techniques and, and do all kinds of stuff with it at this point. see sometimes you need to go back and you need to kind of darken these lines so they show up a little bit better you get the idea I can I can be here all day with this literally I could I could <laughs> But see, there you go. Now it's it's just kind of that's basically um, what it will kind of look like as you're walking through it, and then, then you can stylize it. You can do all kinds of stuff with it. You can draw uh, patterns inside. Um, you can get crazy with the with the um, ends. You can do all kinds of stuff. Um, you can shade the background, or you can darken um, the knot, make the knot light, and the background dark, or the background light and the knot dark, or you know any combination of things. Um, the more shades of gray, black, and white that you use, of course, the more complicated your design, your end design is going to be, and the more three-dimensional and and visually interesting it's going to be but for this these purposes I just kind of did something more or less basic okay so hopefully that helps you um, that is the basic braid with vertical breaks and the next one we do the next video I'm going to do probably right after this one after I've had a little bit of coffee um, is going to be um, the basic braid with horizontal breaks so you can see kind of how how things look different depending on where what kind of breaks you put in where you put them okay so thank you for for watching hopefully this was helpful uh, if you like it hit like hit subscribe share it um, you can find me on the social media uh, my website is diestudiodesigns.com. Uh, I have a blog there. Um, I have uh, I sell faux floral merchandise, fairy houses, handcrafted wooden fairy houses. I sell uh, Celtic artwork that I've wood burned on plaques and plates. Um, it's a work in progress. I'm I'm building up my uh, inventory as I go. Um, but if you have any questions, any requests, anything like that, the best way to get a hold of me is email. Um, and you'll see my email in my um, about information. Okay, so have a great day. Hopefully you're staying cool where you're at. And again, let me know whether you like this or not. And uh, thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. I'm finding that this is a really uh, kind of popular topic so let's see where we can go with this all right until next time have a great day guys bye bye